Hello students, welcome to online classes of Maharaja Public School and as you know I am Sanjay and today I am going to take up class 12th Political Science which has Cold War as its first chapter. But before I formally commence my lecture, let me tell you one thing. For all those students who are in class 12 this year, this year is going to be very crucial for them so far as their future endeavors are concerned. So I, I request all of you to put your best foot forward. Make a, every moment a valuable moment so far as your learning is concerned and pave the way for your future success. Create a niche for yourself and become what you want to be. Coming back to the pages of uh, political science, Cold War, as the name and as the term suggests, is not an actual war scenario, but this is just a step before the actual war, when the two belligerent parties are on the brink of actual war, but they are still not fighting. But the preparedness is complete, and any flashpoint, for that matter, may lead to the actual war, that is Cold War. What are the antecedents of Cold War? What are the origins of Cold War? We need to go back to the World War II. We have seen during the World War II, the USSR marching deep into the German territories. Its Red Army actually was the army which penetrated Berlin also and forced the Germans to surrender in their own backyard. And on the other hand, there was another power, superpower, the US. United States of America, when it's one of the naval bases called Pearl Harbor was bombed by Japanese bombers, was forced into joining the Allied powers against the Axis or Central powers. So I'm referring to the year 1945 when the USSR's Red Army invaded Germany and on the other hand on 6th and 9th August 1945 USA drops two atom bombs the fat man and little boy on two Japanese cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki respectively. And then it, it forces the Japanese emperor to surrender formally on 15th of August, 1945. And this is the emergence of two superpowers after the World War II. USSR, because of its largest conventional army and USA, with new scientific advancements like achieving the target of making atom bomb. So these two powers within the allied system became the superpowers and they gave rise to what we call Eastern and Western blocs. Eastern bloc led by USSR and the Western Bloc was spearheaded by USA. But we need to understand what was so intriguing which made USSR and USA antagonistic to each other. It was not only creating a niche for these two superpowers, respectively for themselves, of course. But there was an ideological warfare also. At the level of ideas, we must remember that after October Revolution in 1917, there then Russia becomes a communist nation, while on the other hand, USA has always been one of the most formidable power so far as capitalism is concerned. So these two warring ideologies, capitalism and communism, 
and then these countries representing either of the two ideologies trying to create an sphere of influence for themselves signing or making instruments like NATO North Atlantic Treaty Organization or Warsaw Pact under USSR to make more countries follow them follow their ideolo ideologies and come into their sphere of influences this is where the cold war begins and it has ramifications on the entire world's geopolitics as well as economics and almost every conceivable part of our lives the cold war was having an impact until in the 90s when uh, when the ussr disintegrated and gave birth to what is called today as cis states or commonwealth of independent states including russia and a unipolar world headed by united states of america so this is just the basic understanding of cold war which you need to have and on this premise the ideological warfare and then a race for nuclear armament which also becomes one of the most focal points of cold war and then certain flash points also like cuba crisis all these things we will be discussing in the next uh, in the next lecture stay tuned with us for next lecture we hope to meet very soon thank you bye bye